So with all the popularity of AMD products um, lately, we were sent a new one from ASUS. This is the ROG Crosshair 8 Impact. Looking for a new PC or PC hardware? Then today's sponsor, Micro Center, is guaranteed to have what you need. Micro Center's huge selection of hardware and devices, along with their industry-leading prices, mean you get more for your money this holiday season. With Build Your Own, Micro Center carries the latest in PC tech from all major brands, while passionate, knowledgeable sales staff are available to assist you with your next build. Not comfortable building it yourself? Then certified in-store technicians can build it for you in as little as the same day. To see all that Micro Center has to offer and to find the store closest to you, click the sponsor link in the description below. So here she is, the ASUS ROG, or the ROG Republic of Gamers, which is technically a brand under ASUS, I guess now. Uh, Republic of Gamers Crosshair 8 Impact. I think they're calling it Impact because it's having an impact on the competition. I don't know. But we got a peel to do here. These are never as satisfying because they're like... Anyway, if you're wondering why I'm all wet, it's because I'm really excited about this board and it was hailing outside a minute ago and I was running around in it acting like an idiot. Ow, 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 ow. That's a lot of hail. Ow. Oh, slippery too. I guess California forgot that it was winter and then really quickly turned the thermostat back down because it was like, oh crap. So this is not a mini ITX board. This is a mini DTX. I'm not sure what the D stands for, but basically the difference is most ITX boards stop right at the PCI Express lot. This one is extended down below, which is basically, they just decided, well, you know, if a graphics card has already taken up two slots and the chassis have to accommodate for that anyway, well, most of the chassis, we'll talk about that in a sec. Why not extend the motherboard longer to get more things on there to make it, uh, make the, the layout a little more friendly. The VRMs is usually the part that lacks the most when it comes to a small form factor motherboard. The VRMs are what is going to limit the power draw and stability of your overclock. So if your VRMs are, are not up to standard or they're not up to the task of overclocking, then what will happen is they will get really, really hot. And then you end up having bad days when you overheat your VRMs. So ITX motherboards are typically not as friendly with overclocking as say their full size brothers, like in this case here, the Crosshair 8 Hero. Same chipset, both X570, both uh, AM4 when it comes to the socket. The difference though, honestly, is you're gonna give up four slots of RAM for two slots per channel versus one slot per channel over here on the Mini DTX. Um, same socket, same overclocking ability and compressed air apparently. Um, obviously you get one PCI Express slot on a Mini ITX slash DTX board versus however many are gonna be fit on the um, full size ATX board. But what you also are not getting with this is chipset cooling. So you can see here, we do have an X570 chipset cooler built into this motherboard. It's a fan that's turning there. So it's one of the drawbacks that you're going to have with a small form factor motherboard. Now, the reason why I'm even comparing these and showing you big versus small is because price point on X570 stuff, especially like the mini DTX stuff, is not cheap. This is enthusiast grade as far as I'm concerned. Although it's considered mainstream because of the CPU and the socket that it's occupying, this is definitely going to be an enthusiast grade piece of product. If we move to the back, you can see we have integrated wireless. We've got the Q code readout with a reset button right next to it. We've got our um, BIOS flashback and BIOS reset. We've got our um, sound ports on the bottom and then typical USB-C and then all of the USB 3.0s up here and then a single ethernet jack. And then this is basically just a vent to allow the air um, that flows through the heatsink with the active fans, which are existing on this VRM. Uh, to be able to escape. But the active cooling on the VRM means that we're gonna be able to have a decent amount of overclocking with this. Now we do know already that the Ryzen 3 uh, 3000 series is fairly limited with overclocking. Most people hit a wall immediately at 4.2. Hitting 4.3 or higher becomes very difficult just because of the architecture. So I wouldn't necessarily expect this to overclock any farther or any less than the main board because of the fact that we have a bit of an architecture limit at that point more so than the power delivery and stuff like that. But it was just worth mentioning. When it comes to the motherboard layout, it's very well thought out because ITX motherboards, sometimes you look at them and you go, WTF, what were they thinking with this layout? It makes no sense whatsoever. But at least here they have the power, the 24 pin and the eight pin CPU power on the same side, making power routing very streamlined. We've got um, two, 
PWM fan headers right here near the CPU. One's a chassis, one's a, the CPU header. So if you're running an air cooler, then you can plug it in right there without having to route over things. Um, the chassis fan is kind of out of place there in my opinion, but it's, uh, it's nice if you need an extra fan header for let's say an AIO or you can plug in both your AIO fans there, whatever. RGB header here, this is a 12 volt RGB, is up here near the socket. Kind of a strange place for it to be. Two horizontally mounted USB 2.0 headers. So these are still a necessary evil to have. A lot of your AIO coolers, a lot of your um, RGB control panels and stuff still use a U USB interface. We have a full-size USB 3.0 right there. We've got a, looks like front-side USB-C connector right there. Two SATAs, um, or four SATAs, two in two different directions. So one facing out, one facing up. It's always bugged my OCD to have them next to each other facing two different directions. I think I just thought of why. Um, the graphics card is there. So they can't go up. Oh, <laughs> well then put four of them right there and make it taller. Anyway, it's easy. I should be designing motherboards. Yeah, anyway, as Phil just pointed out, that's because of the graphics card. Unless you're running a single slot card, well, I guess it would still kind of be in the way. Anyway, that's besides the point. Surface mounted buttons right here, which is kind of nice. You have a, a start button right there. You've got your reset, clear CMOS. Uh, that's a, actually looks like safe boot and retry button. Now there's two things on here that I want to point out that really show how much effort AMD, or uh, Asus rather, has put into this motherboard is we'll start with this guy right here. This is the SoDim.2. If you guys have ever seen any of the big motherboards, and it's surprising that the AMD um, Crosshair Hero does not have one, but every other like X299 motherboard like I'm using over here for my personal build, um, the Zenith board that we've used for Threadripper in the past, they've all had the DIM.2, which essentially is an extension board. It's got, its, it's got this custom header that's designed to give you basically an expansion card. So in this case, they're calling it SoDIM.2. Clearly it's a play on small because, you know, small board and so dim is the standard for memory in a Mac, in a, I almost said MacBook. Yeah, I guess that would be true too, but in a uh, laptop. But what this gives us here is expandability where we can have two M.2 SSDs attached to it on either side. And then we also have expandability with two additional fan headers as well as an addressable RGB header. So it's not just being used for the M.2, but because of the additional bandwidth that you have, through their, their SODIM setup, you can actually have fan control and RGB through there. Now it has this connect, this cover that goes on both sides. I've already taken it apart so that we can kind of see, um, you know, it does have active cooling and such on there. I think I've got it on there backwards right now. But this is kind of how it looks when it's put together. I think it goes the other way actually. So it kind of goes like that and then, and then it goes like that sort of a deal. But I took it apart so you guys can see. But you can see it does have heat pads on here. So that way, if you take the stickers off your M.2s, a lot of people forget to take the stickers off um, so that these make a direct contact with your chips. Then what happens is these turn into a giant heat sink for your M.2, especially with the speed that PCIe Gen 4 is capable of, which is one of the main selling points to any X570 board if you care about your I.O. speed or especially your read write speed, then um, you're gonna want to keep the drives as cool as possible. Performance degradation is directly related to temperatures when it comes to SSDs, especially M.2. But anyway, this guy basically just snaps in here like this. So what you need to be mindful of now at this point, is you can see it sits up quite a bit taller than the VRM uh, cooler here, the heatsink. So if you've got an AIO or you've got a big tower cooler of some sort going here or a downfire cooler, that sometimes will take up the entire slot. Sometimes the downfire coolers will butt right up against the graphics cards, which as you can see, the, this occupies that space between the graphics card and that void that could sometimes be taken up by the air cooler. So it's something you need to be mindful of because if you don't use this, you don't get any M.2 on this motherboard. Usually you would have an M.2 right here, well, or on the backside or right above the graphics card below the chip Sometimes you'd have it right there horizontal. Um, but no, both of them are designed to go on the SODIM.2. So I thought initially that that's what this was, but it clearly says right there, Supreme FX right on it. So what we have here, this is a PCI, mini PCI Express that they've used to attach the sound card, which to be honest, I'm surprised because typically if they're going with some sort of a sound card like this, 
they would just solder it right onto the motherboard, which is what they've done in the past. But I guess what that's allowed them to do is save space because you can see you've got some of your chipset stuff and other um, problems down here underneath it. So again, it's a space saving maneuver. But the nice thing about them using a PCI Express card like this is the fact that it has the front side audio connector on it, which means it's got the shortest distance possible to communicate with the sound card. Sometimes they're nowhere near each other. And what happens is you get the front side audio cable still crossing across, uh, alongside power cables and other interference, even though it's shielded. You're gonna find that oftentimes the front panel connector for the audio is the most staticky. It's got the worst noise ratio. So this should hopefully alleviate a lot of that since it's connected and separate from the rest of the motherboard. So yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where this is what happens when you want to take something and really kind of have it be no compromises with the exception of its size. Because what we've got right here is an H210 from NZXT, which is the chassis I'm planning on using for my next mod where I, and I want to use this motherboard with a 3950X. And as you can see, it's kind of nice too because it definitely fills the void entirely. One of the things, look, I'm one of those people that if it's big and it's heavy, it's value, which apparently I am very valuable. But as you can see right here, it kind of fills the entire void. One of the things I've always hated is that when you plug a, a, a graphics card into a mini ITX motherboard, the card hangs off the bottom of the card, which is just always kind of bugged me aesthetically. But I mean, that's completely superficial and not important if it performs the way it's supposed to perform. But as you can see, this fills that void perfectly. But there's one thing we need to talk about this with this real quick is although this motherboard will fit in probably 95% of ITX chassis, that's not gonna be true for all of them. The Ghost S1, that, this would not fit in there because remember, that uses a riser card and puts the graphics card on the backside of the board. What was it like? I think it was like that. The X, the Shift X and the, the Shift, we use the Shift for fill and we use the Shift X, or no, we didn't use the Shift X, but it's just a taller version of it. That motherboard goes like this with the ports facing up, not backwards. So this extra distance would have meant that this board would not have mounted in that chassis. And what's happened with a lot of ITX chassis is they've started getting creative. Rather than just building a basic rectangle that fits the perfect square that ITX typically is, they've started orienting it in all kinds of weird ways using riser cards and stuff to maximize the amount uh, that you can fit inside of the chassis. So that's something you definitely need to keep in mind if you're looking at building a small form factor using this mini DTX format. I don't know if we're gonna be seeing a lot of these in the future. I have no idea if other brands have already started jumping on this format because it makes sense. Just extend it roughly an inch and a quarter, or this is maybe, I don't know, 20 millimeters or so, which seems like you could fit a lot more on it, but you'd be surprised just how much it limits the options you have in chassis when it comes to this format. So although the H210 is not the smallest ITX chassis on the market, it still uses a full-size ATX power supply. But there's something in common in the three cases, technically four if we do Shift and Shift X, that is there's a common thread between all those chassis and that this, this wouldn't fit in. And I almost feel comfortable in saying, if it uses an SFX power supply, it's not gonna fit this. So definitely do your check uh, if you're planning on using this motherboard in a build for a small form factor. Um, if it uses a, if it's an ITX case, it uses a, uh, ATX motherboard or ATX power supply. You're probably going to be fine. But if it uses an SFX, chances are it is a very compact, very space saving chassis that may or may not work with this. Cause a lot of SFX mini ITX cases also seem to be using riser cards to get very creative on the way things are laid out. So we were sent this a while ago from ASUS. It took me a while to kind of get to this. Um, I was expecting to already be building in this, but because we did not receive a 3950X in lieu of Threadripper 3 stuff that we're doing, um, it means that this was kind of put on hold. That's okay, I'm behind on builds anyway. I've still got to finish Nebula. Um, that's just on me. I've been too busy with other things to finish it. I haven't had, it's my personal rig. I haven't had pressure to get it done. So I'm just been kind of floating along getting that done. But I wanted to show you guys this one because I think with the 3950X out now and this being able to run it and overclock it, I think people might look at this and go, oh man, that's gonna, that's gonna be perfect until you go to install it and you're like, uh-oh. So I wanted to at least kind of show you an overview of the motherboard and then give you some food for thought. So if you guys have any other components you think we should be taking a look at uh, before the end of the year, Christmas is coming up, a lot of gift giving ideas. We're gonna have some gift, not so much gift guide, but kind of the idea of like what to buy the PC nerd in your family for Christmas. Cause you know, people like us, we're not easy to shop for. 
And you may not even know what you want for Christmas. I bet right now you've got someone asking you like, Bill, what do you want for Christmas? And you're like, I don't know. And they're like, well, you have like really hard hobbies to shop for. I mean, I don't know. It's like, would you try and buy your wife a pair of shoes for Christmas? No, you don't do that. You give them a gift card. Guys, I'm gonna go. Thanks for watching. Make sure you uh, sound off in the comments below if you have anything else you think we should check out. And uh, links to this motherboard will be down there as well. It's very robust, it's very durable. But links to this will be down in the description below if you guys wanna see pricing and all that sort of stuff. Because pricing is ever changing. And I'll be honest, I have no idea what this costs right now. But it's probably not cheap. It's premium. It's like 93 everywhere else, but 91 in California. I'm talking gasoline, folks. Just turn it off.